up here in this part of what we're doing with the layout we hit some interesting problems with regard to what our original plan was with the hardware we had planned to have all of the storage yards being run by a dedicated train controller with a separate command station and having an interface point if you imagine like a passport or a border between two countries where trains would be um, transferred from one system to another but in our experiments that didn't work particularly well and so we had to think of a different way of going about it um, eventually we came up with a different solution but it causes knock-on problems but we think we've solved most of those so we'll keep you informed as to how it actually proves but the theory goes like this we decided we'd go back to one command station with one train controller but that gave us a problem with the bus. If you remember, the Loconet bus is the all-important thing that everything feeds into train control and between all the operators and the signals, everything goes around the Loconet bus. The Loconet bus on the existing layout is fairly well utilised, fairly loaded, and by tripling the size of the layout, by, by doubling that layout to the layout in here and then adding all the storage system underneath it, which has got to be automated, um, we thought, that might not work. So we then looked at ways of separating out the loco nets and we came up with an ingenious plan where we have two different loco net buses. The first one will be for the command station, the primary command station, that will run all of the boosters and all of the trains. So every engine will be controlled, all the throttles will go on to that. So that's half the traffic will be relating to train movements and power to the track. And then the second Loconet bus, with its own command station, but not running any trains, will be there to hold all of the, the point feedback, the, the sensor feedback, um, the, the switch instructions, etc., etc., etc. So all the accessories on the layout will be on the second Loconet bus. And we think we should be able to get away with that. So that's a kind of work in progress thing. But that then also meant, for example, that we, well, we had to then extend the capacity of the number of monitors on one computer. So we, we worked with a local company to say, what can we do to run eight monitors on one train controller? We think we got that cracked. We got that installed. We also got a new piece of hardware in from uh, GBF Designs. Fraser up there developed us a board that allows us to um, have up to 16 ERDOT inputs that can then get translated into sensor messages going onto Loconet. So that allowed, that freed up an awful lot of space. The third piece of the jigsaw here is that we recognize that the train controller guy, when he's running all of his stuff, as you've seen with the demonstration we did with the iPads, he's going to be overloaded adding all of the, the train information um, such as the coach set and the locomotive into train control. It's quite a fiddly process. And David, David Evans, came up with this clever idea of being able to use the database to maybe inject Loconet commands on to, to effectively assist train controller by telling it that this coach set and that locomotive are in a particular yard. What's interesting is that there are two forms of this um, information transfer are available today which is railcom and transponding they work for locomotives they'll tell you where it is and what orientation it is in terms of whether it's facing this way or that way but what they don't do is tell you about the stock that the locomotive is pulling and so what we're intending to do is to inject the stock positions um, at the point where the station manager has committed a train to go from london to manchester via the staging yard the database will know that that stock set is there ready to go and it will inject onto Loconet the relevant transponding message to go into train controller so that the train is already preformed, and that's going to save the train controller manager an absolute huge amount of time um, and allow him to monitor the movement of trains so that's but that we don't know that's going to work and that's well <laughs> it's going to be an experimentation process and the last thing I'm going to do is finally just show you where we are with the boards. So just to give you a quick update where we are with all the boards, there will be eight panels in total in here and six of them are completely wired up and ready to run. We have 
The first three on the top here are all for each of the island sections in the staging of the storage yard. This level here will be for the fourth level that goes upon, upon top here, which Steve and Martin have got to make sure it links in with the helix in the existing layout. The bottom three here um, power the three dead end sections there. And then the final eighth board will be for the visible layout. And that with the, th the four boards that will be here, which three are populated, will effectively complete the bulk of the wiring infrastructure or the power and digital infrastructure we need on this layout. So we're a good way forward on all these things. So fine, let me just quickly show you um, what one of these boards looks like. So these are all fairly consistent and identical in their format. We have a booster which looks after the power supply for this, for this particular island section, level B. We have a PM42 which controls for any short circuits we might create and isolates the problem to a specific area. The trap power then feeds through two of these BDL 168s which gives us all the occupancy we need to detect with train control about where trains are moving through the sections on that particular piece of board. We also have uh, a pair of DAC 20s which control all the point motors. There are about 16 points on this island for each level. And then finally there's two new boards I mentioned earlier on um, which give you the feedback from the ERDOTs. They create sensor messages which go out over Loconet. We talked about splitting the Loconet. The black Loconet here is for the power and for the locomotive instructions. The white Loconet here is for all the point feedbacks. There is actually a hybrid of the two which we have to run for the BDLs and PM42s, but I won't bore you with that. It's just a technical limitation which we don't understand, but it works. The other little gadget we have up here is this RR amp meter, which allows us to just monitor the track power that each individual booster is generating, so we can see whether we're overloading the layout or not, because we don't know whether 30 trains in one section is going to draw more power than these boosters are rated for. And they're all pretty much the same. That's about it. Simple, he said.